the first night of our trip went well. We have found ourselves an excellent place to make the camp. Thick vegetation was on our right and left flank, so we only had to keep an eye on two sides. Even if we got attacked, we would have a chance to retreat. In any case, we were still pretty close to our main camp, and I doubt that the enemy troops would wander around in large numbers. But I guess I should not underestimate them, and be prepared for anything. That's why I said Liz should take her bow and hop onto the largest tree and keep her eyes on the nearby road while Jack looked over our backs from the hole covered with leaves. Revan was doing his best to make us the best possible dinner on the smallest possible fire, and, well, he somehow managed to make the best meal I've had for some time. We weren't talking too much while eating. The whole atmosphere was pretty scary, and our senses were sharper than our swords and daggers. We would jump on anything, and even the smallest sounds made by rats or birds would make the adrenaline rush through our bodies. I could hear thunders rumbling in the distance, but they were still too far to be of any importance to us. The fire was put out immediately after the dinner was ready, but the full moon was shining upon the forest, so it wasn't a big problem since we could still see each other. The biggest problem at this moment was the rather cold air, and even though we were fully equipped in our gear, we could still feel its chilling touch. But we shouldn't complain as Liz is probably freezing in the treetop. I grabbed a blanket and some food and went to her position, 30 meters from us. I have now realized that our camp was on the perfect spot, as I couldn't see anything that would reveal anything unnatural. I guess I was kind of proud of my decision to make our camp there, but I was feeling rather bad for asking Liz to take the last shift on the coldest air. After coming to the tree, I signaled her to come down. While waiting for the response, I was trying to look around and see if I could spot anything strange. After one minute, Liz was still completely silent. I tried to signal to her again, but with no success. The tree wasn't so high, she should have heard me even the first time. Liz! Liz! I tried to call for her, as silent as I could, but with no response again. Now I got worried. I doubt that she is sleeping, but I had to check. After I lowered down the equipment to climb the tree, something suddenly grabbed me from the back and put its hands on my mouth. Before I could say anything, I was completely stunned and almost died from the heart attack. We are not alone here. I've heard a familiar voice and somehow managed to put myself together before reacting and stabbing Liz with my dagger in the jacket. What the hell are you doing here? I asked her, but she just said that we have to get back to our camp as soon as possible and warn our friends. Before I could say anything else, I saw three figures come in our way. Luckily, I've recognized the body shapes of our friends and tried to figure out why they would also leave their position. Revan just said, Liz, I saw it too. After a few minutes of following Revan's lead, we have found a place to make a pause and update our situation. They both could not tell anything clear about the intruder. While Liz was trying to find a better branch to lean onto, she suddenly noticed a strange figure on the road, looking right into her, with its piercing red eyes. It came out of nowhere, and was just standing there and looking, as if it could see her. A few seconds spent on finding an arrow was enough for this intruder to suddenly disappear. Once she got down from the tree, she saw somebody coming at her position a few minutes later, but then she recognized me. Revan saw the same figure a few minutes later, but this time, he was looking at their camp from the road below the hill. He went on to warn Jack and decided they should go to warn us. That's all we could tell. We are now sitting here, with our weapons ready to strike on any sign of danger. We couldn't make any sense of what just happened, but we all had a feeling that we were about to find out.